Happy New Year. Uh, I'm going to be explaining the brachial plexus again. Uh, the first video was not like, ideal because of the voice, but I'm going to try to do a good job this time. Uh, the screen has to be small so I can draw on it. If it is large screen, it will not be a good drawing. So we start with the the problems of the brachial plexus. Why people don't understand it? Because you don't remember the key. The key is C7 is the key. C7 is an independent nerve root. It is alone by itself. C5 and C6 will join each other and will make the upper trunk C7, T1 will join each other and make the inferior or the lower trunk. C7 will be the middle trunk. So let's see this process. You can see it here. This is the upper trunk. And you can see how they joined each other, the top two, the lower two, and the middle one is an independent. So what happened after that? You got the roots of the tree, then you got the trunk of the tree, then you start dividing. And this is a very important key factor in remembering the brachial plexus. So what happened here is the Posterior divisions will join each other. And they become the posterior cord, which ends with the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. So it is like a fork have three branches on one side and two on the other side, that's the posterior cord. And in the posterior cord, you get three nerves, the upper, lower, subscapular, and the thoracodorsal. That is the posterior cord. That's the key. The, if you're gonna remember the brachial plexus, you got to remember that part. You got to see it like this. Now we go to the anterior divisions. What happened to the anterior divisions? So we got the roots, make a trunk, then the trunk divides into anterior and posterior division. We clear on the posterior division. Now we go to the anterior divisions. How do we do the anterior divisions? The upper trunk have an anterior division. The middle trunk have an anterior division. So they come and join each other because the middle trunk say, I don't wanna be alone. I can't handle it, it's too much pressure. So he goes and join the superior, superior or the upper trunk anterior division. So now that becomes what? Lateral cord. We got posterior cord down. When the posterior divisions joined, it becomes posterior cord. When the anterior division joins, it becomes cords, cords. So this is the lateral cord. Will end by muscular cutaneous and the lateral branch of the median nerve and here in this spot that i made it thicker we get the lateral pectoral i made it thicker so i remember it lateral pectoral 
This is the lateral cord. Now we go to the medial cord. You have the anterior division. And the medial cord refused to join with any other branches. Why? Because they name it inferior lower. He wants to prove that he can make it along by itself or himself. So it goes give three branches the medial pectoral the lateral cutaneous branch of the arm and the anti-brachial cutaneous branch of the forearm is going to end by the ulnar nerve and give us a branch to the median nerve. The medial branch to the median nerve. Now we made the median nerve right here. This is the median nerve. Very easy. There are some branches that you need to be aware of. One of them is the long thoracic comes from C5 C6 and C7 that is a very important branch you call it the long thoracic nerve and injury of that nerve will create medial winging of the scapula there's another branch comes out of C5, dorsal scapular, for the muscles in the back of the neck. And then the most important one of all in these branches is going to be this guy. It's going to be this guy here coming from the upper trunk, and that is the suprascapular nerve never had branches from any trunk except from the upper trunk and that is the suprascapular nerve that supplies the rotator cuff so at the end you would see something like that or something like that try to draw it keep practicing and I will keep stressing that. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful, and I hope the voice was clear. Thank you. I appreciate that.